Hey everybody, what's up? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy. Uh, here to get with you on some old school, here's some of my old school material. This is like I like to do from back in the day. Um, I wanna talk to you guys about the anatomy of a DAC, okay? Let's look at the DAC and let's consider many of the things that go into it and let's consider all the things that go into it and, and kind of demystify this thing they call DAC. For most intensive purposes, the DAC is a computer with an analog output stage. Um, that means we take digital music. Okay, so music from a digital standpoint, if you listen to it, it sounds like sss. That's all it sounds like. You must convert that into analog for us to hear it in a sine wave form, okay? This is a converter, okay? This is the very important part that's called a converter, a digital to analog converter, a DAC, okay? The DACs are everywhere. They're in your cell phone. Uh, and they're usually just included in stuff. But when you get into high-end audio, we separate the converter out into a separate box usually because we'd like to make it very elaborate. We don't want just a cheap little DAC that's on a chip. Some of them, you could fit the whole, all of this onto a little teeny chip. Uh, like for instance on your cell phone probably teenier than I mean any of these things that just microchip would have all this okay um, and so I'm just gonna go through simply what we have inside any given DAC this is gonna be the basic uh, layout for most of your DACs okay this one is a little more elaborate what we have here is a Rockna wave dream signature balanced version okay and this is an R2R DAC. And all that means is R2R is a resistor ladder, okay, um, versus a chip type or the third kind FPGA based or software based, okay? The chip is also a software, firmware, if you will, um, but you can't program it. It stays the same, like the Burr Browns you hear about or the, you know, um, Cirrus Logic or those different, you know, types of chips. Um, those are already programmed. They have their filters on there. You pretty much can't mess with them. They're, they're, they stay the same. If they get uh, obsolete, then you, your, your DAC is obsolete. For, I mean, but even when they are no longer made, the old DACs in many ways are still very good. Um, the DAC, you should know, is one thing that is not advancing rapidly. If you hear people say, Oh, the DACs, they change so fast. They're changing every year. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? This is a prime example because this is a DAC. It's a couple years old. It's considered very high-end, and this DAC is old technology. What happened with DACs is in our zeal to hit the best numbers, we went so far forward that we hit a dead end. We smacked into a wall where we were decoding things that nobody was recording in. So it's kind of ridiculous. You'd have to upsample it to this super high uh, rate in order to decode it. No one's recording natively in that format. So we hit a dead end. And then we came backwards and we started to make R2R DACs. This is old technology. And so we went backwards uh, with DACs. So DACs are absolutely at a standstill. They are in a pinch to differentiate themselves and to innovate and do new things. So a lot of the new things that you see in DAX are suspect to me because they've already hit the wall. Now people are scrambling to find things to design their DAX in, in a way that makes it quote unquote new or innovative, but really they're just rehashing old stuff in this case or they are making things up and trying to reinvent the wheel in order to differentiate themselves. When really, if you just make a good DAC, you don't have to change it. It could be a 15 year old design. If it's good enough, if it's made with integrity, it's still gonna sound like a million bucks, okay? This is not new technology. This is stuff you've seen in MSB before. These modules should be very familiar to you. These look like MSB modules. Well, they are MSB modules in some way, shape, or form. Um, they work together at one point. I don't know whose technology it was. It could be MSBs, could be Rockness. I have no idea. All I know is that this is the same exact look as those older MSB modules. MSB now has more modern modules. 
These are still the old school ones, but they sound phenomenal, okay? What you see here is this. You see a very simple layout. It's the beauty of this design. I love that it's very simple. Simple is beautiful to me, okay? This is one analog output left. This is the right or this, whatever, this is the right. This is the left analog output. So this whole board is all analog output section. This whole board is all analog output section. So we have a dual mono analog output section. This is the power supply, including these three transformers, the switch, the inlet. So power comes in here, comes all the way over to here to the power switch. Power switch gives power to come to these three transformers. You've got this transformer that powers this analog. You've got this transformer that powers this analog board. And then you've got this transformer that powers the digital section right here, okay? And this front uh, display or something like that, okay? <laughs> the bottom line is you see three separate transformers coming off one feed and then it's feeding one rectification stage. That's what this is. This is rectification, filtration, and regulation. So these are voltage regulators on these heat sinks. These are filter caps to filter out the ripple or the noise from these transformers. And it, 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 it comes here into here AC, it's still AC. This, okay, so I'll, I'll be more specific. It comes in 120 volts. It hits these transformers. Each one of them steps it down to a lower AC voltage. This one has seven volts and 11 volts. So it's got dual, dual secondaries. This one has a center tap, looks like, with the dual secondary. Um, that, well, I can't quite read it. Um, but it's got, it's got two voltages. It's, well, actually, it probably has a positive voltage and a negative voltage with a center tapped um, and it's center tapped. So this powers this, this powers that, this powers this, this filters the noise, these regulate the voltage to get them to their exact proper voltage right here. This steps them down to AC voltage, but by the time it goes through here, it's DC voltage. And it comes out these voltage regulators, DC regulated voltage, and it hops over to the board on this uh, little header right here. That's where the voltage goes. That's where the power comes onto these boards. The power comes onto this board right here, as you can see. These are from the controller, from the front panel, these two red twisty things. And then this is also from the controller. Um, these are from the buttons, so the actual input. And then this, and this has the readout and all the, you know, the readout for the front panel comes off this puppy. And then the digital information hops over to this board on this header right here or on these two little, little jumpers there. Okay, as you can see right in here, these are the digital inputs. So we got USB, two HDMIs, a AES and a SPDIF, okay? And these are all your inputs. You can see here is an FPGA, so they put some filters on there, whatever they do with the FPGA. There are some relays here. Um, we've got, uh, these are the clocks, these square things, one here, one here, those are the clocks. So this will make the digital, take the input of the digital information, it will reclock them, and then send it out nice and reclocked over here to the DAC. So we got the clock here, we got the DAC over here. They're about whatever, four inches. We have to come in the input actually is right up here. So we hop over, it sends, it sends the signal underneath the board up to here, and then it runs through these things, and then runs through this, and then runs out in the output section. This is a class A buffer stage, very cool output stage. Um, it's like a baby class A amplifier basically right here that powers this half of the signal. Now this is a balanced output. That's why you see two of these. On the single-ended version, there's only one, okay? Because it's signal and then ground reference point. The, with balance, we've got positive signal and negative signal. So this is double the whole circuit of the, of the, of the single-ended version. This is done to lower noise floor. You have negative signal, positive signal, uh, and, and, and they come out the balance. They will come out the balanced output. If you use the single-ended output, you're only using half and you're coming out the single-ended. If you're using both, net, both phases, because um, they're 180 uh, out of phase with one another, 
It cancels noise, that's why they do this. It also means it gives double the voltage on the output. The output is much stronger. It can drive a much longer cable and it's resilient to noise. So in my opinion, balanced is the way to go. The only reason I would use single-ended is if you're using single-end triode amplifiers, then keep it, maintain the integrity, keep it all single-ended, but I prefer balanced, okay? So that's what this is. Over here's where all the digital stuff. So your whole digital processing and everything happens right here. Hops over to, to here, right on these jumpers, comes up here, process, goes through these filter caps. Through There's the, also another secondary voltage regulation that happens in here. And then it comes across, it decodes right under here. This is a shield to prevent, you know, noise from getting onto those, those, uh, um, those resistors. And if you see something, for instance, like the uh, ter Denifrips Terminator, they just have all their resistors open in the air for noise to assail. This is what you call a Faraday shield that shields RF from hitting the very sensitive components in here. So Denifrips Terminator is really, when I talked to the Rockna designer, he looked at it and said, looks like a copy of our technology. I don't doubt it. It's made in China. It probably is a direct copy of this, but it's a half-assed copy. It does not do near the, 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 the job that this does. Okay, so this is our typical DAC. We've got output sections, we've got a power supply, we've got the transformers, and we've got the digital section. Okay, that's all there is to it. I just wanted to show you an R2R version, and then I will come back with a, a second installment, and I will show you a more elaborate uh, DAC. We'll take it up another step, and I'll show you how things change. So... There you go. See you.